There's no better time to swap a Coyote engine into your classic Ford than now. With Terminator X supporting Gen 1 and Gen 2 Coyote engines, there's finally an affordable standalone engine management system for your Coyote engine. In this video, we'll cover how to select the right Terminator X for your Coyote, installing the harness onto the engine and transmission, and finally setting up the Terminator X through the touchscreen. With Terminator X, you get Holly EFI's TIVCT control module that provides plug and play compatibility. Aftermarket engine management systems involving Coyote swaps generally lock out or disable the cam phasers, compromising the Coyote's best selling point, the TIVCT. Terminator X allows you to keep Ford's twin independent variable camshaft timing completely functional for maximum drivability and performance. With the included 3.5 inch handheld touchscreen, no laptop is required. You'll just answer a few basic questions which I'll show you later. Couple that with nitrous and boost control along with data logging capabilities and you got quite the system. With Terminator X Max you can run the drive by wire and control the 4R70W or 4R75W transmission. One thing you'll need to provide is an EFI rated fuel system. You can find all the components you'll need at Holly's website. You'll need to ask yourself a few questions when choosing the right Terminator X for your application. First, you'll need to identify your Coyote engine. Holly's Terminator X currently supports Gen 1 and Gen 2 engines. Next, you'll need to know if you need drive-by-wire and transmission control. Only Terminator X Max supports drive-by-wire and transmission control, so you'll save a few bucks if you don't need this functionality. Finally, you'll need to know which injectors your engine has. That way, you'll get the correct harness. They'll either be EV6 or EV1 injectors depending on the model. EV6 injectors use the US car connector, while the EV1 use the Jetronic. With this information, you can then choose the right Terminator X for your Coyote engine. Let me show you how easy installation is. It couldn't be any easier with our plug and play harnesses. All the connectors are clearly labeled. We'll be using most of the stock sensors on our Mach Gen 1 engine. Most of the connections are in the back of the engine, which is where we'll start. The first connection we'll make is to the knock sensor harness located underneath the manifold. Look for the rather large six cavity connector. One thing to note is that most Ford connectors have this locking tab which secures the connection. Make sure to click them in place after inserting the connector. In the back of our passenger side head is our coolant temperature sensor and our crank sensor. Let's find the crank and CTS connectors and plug them in. There's a loose black wire with a ring lug. This wire needs to be grounded to the back of the head. The passenger side or bank one intake cam sensor, it's the only cam sensor located on the main harness. Let's go ahead and plug it in and secure the locking tab on it. The rest of the cam sensors and cam phaser connectors are on our TIVCT harness, which we'll plug in later. Holly's Terminator X systems give you the option to run a manual throttle body and bypass the factory drive-by wire. The main harness includes TPS and both a Ford and LS style IAC connectors for use with cable operated throttle bodies. Since we're using the factory drive-by wire, we'll just tuck these wires underneath the manifold since we won't be using them. Even though the Coyote engine does not use a MAP sensor, our Terminator X EFI requires this sensor data. You'll need some simple vacuum line to connect it to the one bar map sensor built in the Terminator X ECU. It simply connects to the intake manifold after the throttle body. There's a port on the back of our manifold that we can tee off and use. If you're using a blower or turbo, you'll need to add an additional pressure sensor which you can then plug into the map connector provided. The mass airflow sensor is located on the cold air intake track, which our Terminator X uses to calculate air temperature. Our harness also provides a dedicated lead for a manifold air temperature sensor should you want to use one of the more commonly available Ford air temp sensors. To get oil pressure data, we'll have to install one of Holly's stainless steel pressure sensors. We'll use a brass adapter to easily thread it onto the stock sensor location. Our fuel pressure lead will also require a sensor and adapter to fit onto our stock fuel rail. There's a dedicated harness for our drive-by-wire connections. The big connector goes to our J3 plug on our Terminator X ECU. Next up is our throttle body plug. Our last connector goes to our pedal assembly. The loose wire goes to a 12-volt input from the brake pedal switch. 
Let's move on to the coil harness. It's numbered one through eight. It's pretty straightforward. Just remember that in a Coyote engine, the firing order is one, two, three, four on the passenger side and five, six, seven, eight on the driver's side. Find your cylinder number one connector and plug it in. Go ahead and plug in the rest following the cylinder order. The coil harness has two single rectangular connectors that plug into the factory ignition capacitors. These capacitors make the ignition system function optimally while reducing RF noise. If your Coyote engine is missing any of these capacitors, they can be purchased at any Ford dealer. The engine will run without them, but we recommend using them for a robust installation. Now we can connect our coil harness to the main harness. Let's jump into our fuel injector harness. Just like the coil harness, it follows the firing order. Depending on which injectors you're using, they also have a locking green tab. Make sure to lock them in place after connecting. Connect the injector harness to the main harness, which is labeled INJ. There's four connectors on the main harness for two ignition modules. Each module controls one bank of cylinders. The modules are interchangeable, but make sure the connectors marked 1, 2, 3, 4 go to the same module and the connectors marked 5, 6, 7, 8 go to the other module. Basically match the color-coded connectors to each other. Next up is our Wideband O2 harness. It's an essential part of Terminator X's self-learning capabilities, so make sure to follow the install recommendations in the manual. There's a small adapter harness that attaches to our Wideband O2 harness, making this plug and play. Let's move on to our TIVCT harness. This harness has a power connector that plugs into the main power harness. We'll plug that in later. The main bulkhead connector goes to the main harness and the other connector goes to our TIVCT controller module. Let's plug in our bulkhead connector first which goes to the VVT connector on the main harness. It's got a protective cap we need to remove first. For our phaser and sensor connections we're going to start on the passenger side which is bank 1. All exhaust phasers and sensors are closest to the exhaust side while the intake phasers and sensors are towards the intake. Phasers are towards the front of the engine while all the sensors are in the back. Plug in the exhaust phaser and intake phaser connectors for bank one. On the back side of our bank one head is the exhaust sensor. Let's move on to bank two or the driver's side head. The lower bottom connector is our bank two exhaust phaser connection while the top one is our intake phaser. Out to the back side of the head, on the top side is our intake cam sensor, and the bottom one is our exhaust cam sensor. Holly's TIVCT controller has a bank of dip switches that need to be configured depending on your model Coyote. For Terminator X users, there are only two configurations, Gen 1 or Gen 2. Set the dip switches accordingly for your application. These pre-programmed cam position tables are designed for best drivability and power. Upgrading to a Dominator or HP ECU offers the ability to set up custom cam tables on the TIVCT controller. Let's plug into our TIVCT module. Now we can plug our main connectors to our Terminator X Max ECU. The J1A and J1B connectors will come from the main harness. The J3 connector will be our drive by wire plug. The main power connector plug is next and then the transmission plug which is J4. Since our transmission is missing all the connectors, I won't be able to show you the connections, but they are pretty much straightforward. Here's a diagram of how they go wired together. The loose wires include a 12 volt activated brake light wire which goes to the brake light switch. An optional overdrive cancel wire can be put on a momentary switch to disable enable the overdrive. The light blue wire is an overdrive status switch that goes to the ground side of an LED to indicate if overdrive is active. A reverse light switch for reverse lamp activation. And a neutral safety switch wire for the starter circuit. And finally a 4x4 module wire for 4x4 models. Last but not least, let's go ahead and plug in our handheld display into the CAN bus connector. In the main harness you'll also find some loose wires. The red wire with the white stripe should be connected to a 12 volt switched power source such as your ignition switch. Make sure this wire has power when the engine is cranking over. 
The 12 volt battery wire should go directly to the battery. The green 12 volt pump wire can be used to power a fuel pump. If your pump requires over 15 amps, use a separate relay and use this wire to trigger it. The blue wire with the white stripe is your TAC output wire. Terminator X includes an auxiliary input output adapter containing four inputs to monitor vital sensors and four outputs to help you control your accessories. The main power harness must be connected directly to the battery. It powers our TIVCT module and our Terminator X Max ECU. The TIVCT power connector has a cap you must first remove. Let's go ahead and connect it. Before supplying power to the ECU, always verify that all the sensor connections as well as the power and grounds are wired correctly. This connector should be the last thing you plug into your ECU. Now that we have it all hooked up, let's go ahead and run through the wizard. So upon its first power up, it will load this screen here. The screen wants us to perform a TPS auto set since we've never done one. Press OK and we'll get to that after we get our Terminator X dialed in. On the home screen, you're going to click on the wizards icon. And on the following screen, you're going to click on the GCF wizard. This wizard will build a base calibration for our specific engine. We have two options, MPFI or TBI. Choose MPFI for multi-port fuel injection. Click Next. And then choose the engine platform, which in our case is a Ford Coyote. We'll press the Next button. We only have eight cylinders. Click Next. And we have the correct firing order. Hit Next. For engine displacement, we can select cubic inches or liters. We'll select liters since coyotes are known as five liters. We'll click on the prompt and edit the number and make it 5.0. Click Save and then Next. For target idle speed, we'll choose something that's reasonable like 750 RPM. For camshaft specs, we'll select the first option since our engine is completely stock. For a street strip cam or a phaser locked out coyote, you might want to choose a second option. For a full blown race calibration, that would be option three. For the vast majority of people, option one would be best. For ignition type, we'll choose Ford Coyote with TIVCT. For fuel pressure, we'll choose 60 PSI since that's what our car has, but the main thing is making sure the fuel pressure matches closest to what actual engine pressure is. So if it's closer to 58, go with 60. If it's closer to 40, go with 43. For injectors, we'll choose OEM since it's got stock OEM injectors. Click Next. And that's the Coyote part number for our injectors. Hit Next. This is a no power adder. Select None. For MAP sensor, we'll select the internal one bar. Next. And it is drive-by-wire, so we'll press Yes. It will ask us if it's an early or late model drive-by-wire throttle body. In our case, this is a late model throttle body. For transmission control, we'll press yes since this is actually controlling the transmission. And in this instance, this is a later 4R70W. For tire diameter, it's got a 28 and a half inch tall tire. Next, it's got a 327 rear end gear ratio. Click Save, and now we're done. Click Start, and it'll start building our calibration and then upload it to our ECU. Now that it's done, it will ask us to cycle the ignition for four seconds. And on boot up, we should hear the fuel pump turn on. There we go. Now it's asking us to do a TPS auto reset. Hit the OK button and click on the wizards again. Now we're gonna click on TPS auto set. It's going to warn us to make sure our ignition is on and the engine is not started. Click Start. Slowly press the pedal to the floor twice. Go wide open and back two times. Hit the next button, we should get a successful confirmation and we're done. And now we can start the car. All that's left to do is drive the car and let the Terminator X perform its self-learning process. The best way to do this is to put the vehicle through its paces throughout the entire RPM range. With a little patience and planning, Terminator X makes it easy to put a Coyote in your classic Ford. Learn more about Terminator X at holly.com.